May 10, 5th Sunday of Easter, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? You do not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing His works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than this, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord Believing in Jesus and doing His works The Gospel is part of the Last Supper discourse of Jesus. The disciples were perturbed that Jesus will leave them after accomplishing His mission. It is necessary that He must leave to prepare their destiny and that all of humankind, the Father's house, the ever-doubting Thomas expresses his separation, anxiety, and wants Jesus to remain because without his master, he feels lost and does not know the way. Likewise, Philip argues that if Jesus should leave them, he must first show the Father and that will ease all their fears. Jesus reassures the disciples of his abiding presence. He tells them that the Father has always been present in His teachings and miraculous deeds, signs of God's power at work. While the world cannot accept the Spirit because it does not know the Spirit, Jesus relies on His believing disciples since they know the Spirit because it remains with you and will be in you. Jesus then tells his disciples that they will be doing the works he has done and continuing to accomplish the mission he has started. Jesus will send the Holy Spirit, the power that will renew the face of the earth. Behind the scene, the Holy Spirit is at work, giving impetus and inspiration to all ministers of the church. As the Acts of the Apostles in our first reading describes, the twelve together with the whole community select seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom they appoint to the task of diaconia or service to the needy in the community while they devote themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. How does the Holy Spirit operate in the church, the community of believers? Paul explains there are different kinds of spiritual gifts but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord to one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom, to another the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit.